Truma, makers of the combi heater and iNet system, are proud to sponsor Practical Motorhome TV. Welcome to Practical Motorhome TV, your one-stop shop for buying, owning and getting the most from your motor caravan. I'm Niall Hampton and on tonight's fantastic show, we'll be reviewing the Pilot P650C, visiting Bagwell Farm Touring Park, but first of all, let's have a look at the super clever Adria Compact SLS. Adria's compact range of low profiles has been given a welcome boost for 2016 in the shape of a new model with a standout innovation. I don't really think many people saw this coming, but it is truly amazing. Let's have a look. And here it is, this one meter long slide out section at the back of the motorhome. Now this is a true industry first for a volume producer. A couple of manufacturers at Dusseldorf were showing off this kind of thing. Adria is one of them with the SLS. So what's the advantage of this slide out section? Well, it operates at bed level so you can extend the bed to the back of the motorhome while keeping the overall length of the vehicle at 5.99 meters long. Now, some people may be worried about slide outs and their perceived propensity to leak, but Adria has thought about that. You'll notice at the top, there is actually an awning that comes out as well. So it keeps it as rainproof as possible. And inside, you can really see the benefit of this innovation. I mean, just consider if the van ended around about here, you wouldn't really have a huge amount of bed to play with. And now you've got more than you could possibly imagine. And although it's arranged in the twin singles configuration, this section in the middle means it's effectively a double bed. Very good indeed. Adria has put in a couple of other extra things in too, like a TV stand at the edge of the bed and a roof light up above here. Adria has added in something else that's quite fun too. Above the bed in the headboard position is a galaxy in the ceiling. It's overlaid on the light and you can see all kinds of constellations. Now the galley has its own constellation too, well almost. Check out this illuminated splashback, a very nice design feature. Elsewhere you get a dual fuel fridge, three gas burners, a square sink and great storage up above. And just look at these lockers, they're space saving. They don't intrude too much into the living space and yet there's plenty of space within to put all your stuff. Now not for nothing is this van called an Adria Compact. The space saving washroom is one of the best executions you'll see anywhere. There's a tip up sink, a swivel loo, smart mono block tap and one of the best features I've seen anywhere, a phone in the shower just in case anyone rings while you're washing. Hello? Hello? Oh, nothing seems to be happening. Oh, it's a shower head. Oh, I thought it was a telephone. Must be wearing the wrong glasses. The SLS's lounge is compact, but you'll still get five people in. And the section under the table extends, so you can bring this person here on the jump seat into the party. Now, I've been wondering where the wardrobe is, and I'm sure you have too. I didn't see one in the bedroom. I didn't see one in the washroom or the kitchen. Not that you'd really find them there. That only leaves the lounge. But where could it possibly be? Maybe over here in this section, but that surely can't be a wardrobe because there's a seat at the bottom. No, Adria has basically come up with an amazing solution yet again. Check this out. The wardrobe door that opens with its own cushion. And if that's not enough, there's one other design feature that's given me hours of amusement. These touchy-feely lights. On, off, on, off, on, off, on, off. Chock full with some great innovations, the Adria Compact SLS will cost you £49,990 on the road. There's some fantastic executions inside, including the bed, the washroom and the kitchen, and that excellent dinette with its amazing wardrobe. Now this just goes to show that the Germans can't have it all to themselves when it comes to innovation. Adria is really pushing the envelope with some of the great thinking in evidence on this van. And if they're going to carry on doing that, then this is one company that's never going to be on the slide out. Located in Chickrell on the historic Dorset coast near Weymouth, Bagwell Farm Touring Park is open all year and offers breathtaking views out to sea. The attractive park is quiet, with restrictions on noise at night time, yet boasts an impressive level of facilities, including a children's play area, a laundrette, a large dog exercise area, a shop and an off-license. If you fancy eating on site, you'll receive a warm welcome at the Red Barn Bar and Grill. It's open during the high season and at selected times in spring and autumn and serves good home-cooked food. Um, two of the goats have a guard goose, Gregory, who thinks he's a goat too. 
and we'll protect those two girls from all of the other goats. We're about five miles outside Weymouth with its glorious sandy beach and we're actually overlooking the Chesil Bank. Parts of the site do have a view across the Chesil Bank and the Fleet Lagoon. Any part of the coastline you can go along to the iconic Durdle Door and Lulworth Cove. It's very rugged and beautiful. We've got many different pitches you can book, anything from a standard pitch, which is just grass, semi-service with electric hookup. We've got plus pitches that have a shared water tap on the edge. And we've got the service pitches, full hard standing, double width for your caravan and awning, nice and dry in the winter. They've also got 16 amp electric hookup, their own water tap and a grey waste drain and even a TV hookup. The X53 bus stop is just half a mile from the park and there's a route along a footpath to get there. That route runs all the way from Exeter in the west through to Poole in the east. Top tips, uh, bring your bird spotting books. There's lots and lots of birds and wildlife around the park. Uh, we've got a board in reception and your challenge is to spot a species that we haven't already got written down. Uh, when you're booking a pitch, it's probably good to explain to the receptionist what sort of pitch you like. Um, don't just assume that the super pitch is best for you because it's the, the one of the top price ones. Explain that you like a sea view or whether you like um, to be quieter or away from anybody else. Uh, just tell us what you need and we'll try to match. The 320 touring pitches are large, with the option of a fully serviced pitch should you want to relax. And there are wash blocks with accessible facilities for the disabled. Staff here are friendly and helpful, and if you fancy extending your stay, there are seasonal pitches and storage options available, plus a rally field should you decide to want to come with friends. Are you looking for a capable, continentally produced two berth, which makes the most of its six and a half metres body length? I thought you were. Well, we may have the ideal solution, the Pilot Pacific P650C. Now this van is based on the Fiat Ducato with a 3,500 kg chassis. You can have it up plated though to 3,650 kg to increase the payload, which is a very reasonable 500 kg as it comes out of the factory. But as always with everything, it's what's on the inside that counts. Pilot is a French manufacturer that's very popular in the UK, and for good reason, they make a cracking motorhome. Now their low profile range is called Pacific and two trim levels are available, Essential on test here and Sensation. Now the dealer has spec this van up. Normally it would cost just over £42,000, but its actual windscreen price today is just over £49,000. Some of the examples on offer inside include the faux leather upholstery, gloss facings for the locker doors, and a skylight in the roof of the cab. And all these things taken together really do make the interior ambient sing. Now there are two belted travel seats in the half dinette. You can rotate the table round To make a seating area that can take five and especially because there's an extra seat here a jump seat that just folds up so even this is only a two berth you can get five people around the table at meal times now this van is six and a half meters long so this isn't the biggest kitchen you're ever going to see however you still get two gas burners a circular sink a cutlery drawer with a soft closing action and as part of the dealer upgrades a uk friendly grill and there's also the Duriger skinny fridge which is 138 litre capacity from memory. The near side washroom is a true multi-function space. You have a vanity unit, a storage cupboard and a swivel loo that shares its floor space with the shower tray. But where's the shower you're asking? You can't actually see it, can you? Well, I couldn't either until I realised that there's a catch involved in this washroom and for once it's a pretty good one. You just depress it and then your swing out shower compartment goes right round into place. Voila. Now the C in the 650C designation refers to island bed and what a comfortable bedroom it is. No mean feat on a six and a half meter long van. There's plenty of natural light able to enter from the windows at the side and through roof light up above and you can get round to the bed on either side. Ideal for those visits to the washroom in the middle of the night without having to disturb your partner. Now the bed is set quite low so it's very easy to get in and out of but there's one further trick up its sleeve which is available as an option, an electric mechanism. Now this raises the bed while you're in transit and lowers it when you're pitched up and you operate this from a switch in the garage. And here it is, a simple rocker switch that operates without a key. Other features of note in the rear garage which can be accessed from both sides of the vehicle include a 230 volt power socket, a blown air vent and tie downs for your bulky touring equipment like scooters or bikes. 
Another feature at the back is the three-piece bumper, which is new for 2016 and means if you have a ding, it's cheaper and easier to repair. But then you could always specify an optional reversing camera to minimize the risk in those situations when you find yourself going backwards. Now the Pilot P650C Essential is one heck of a van. It packs a lot in on its six and a half meters long body length and the island bed and the swing out shower are particular highlights for me. Now the habitation door is on the UK offside, but that won't really matter if you do most of your touring in Europe, which I think would be a very sensible thing to do if you had one of these. Welcome back to Practical Motorhome TV. Coming up, we're taking a look at a compact van conversion from Auto Sleepers. But first of all, let's check out the latest version of the iconic VW California. VW California lovers rejoice. The new T6 version is finally here. They're importing two versions to the UK, the entry level beach and the top spec ocean. And you won't be surprised to find out that we have one of those oceans available to look at right behind me. It's absolutely stuffed to the gunnels with extra kit, like a canopy awning and an amazing electric roof, which I've been itching to have a try. All you do, put the key in the ignition, open the side door, press the button, and in a matter of seconds, it just comes down, saving you loads of time and effort. And with the roof safely down, we can take it out on the road and see what this baby is really all about. Our test unit is fitted with a 204 PS bi-turbo engine, allied to the DSG automatic transmission, so it has comfort to go with the style. It's very rewarding to drive, a fantastic driving position, puts you really engaged with the road, and there are loads of bells and whistles fitted to this cab too. Parking sensors at the front, reversing camera going backwards, and obviously tri-zone climate control, another option box that was ticked, and all makes it very comfortable indeed. Now it's worth noting that the change from the T5 to the T6 cab necessitated 6,000 amendments by VW engineers, many of them safety related, so you can rest assured you truly are driving in something really cutting edge. And it has the very latest Euro 6 engine, which meets the most demanding and exacting emission standards. Well, that's the cab all accounted for. So now, quite literally, let's raise the roof and have a look inside. And the first thing you have to do is open the side sliding door. Now this might be a right-hand drive vehicle, but VW doesn't fit the sliding door on the UK near side. In fact, you'll find it right here on the UK off side. Now with the roof and the roof bed raised out of position, there is plenty of headroom in here. In fact, it feels positively palatial. Obviously, this follows the uh, standard camper van layout. We have a fridge which is accessible from the top. Next to that, a pair of gas burners and a sink, and plenty of storage underneath. And how's this for an elegant design solution? There is in fact a table here, which operates on this catch. You just pull it through to this direction, drop the leg and the extendable section here. Down it goes, and hey presto, grubs up, and you can enjoy all your meals from the comfort of this fantastic dining room with a great vista afforded by the side sliding door. And after eating, maybe it's time for a siesta. So what easier thing to do than to utilize the travel seats and to drop them down to make a fully flat bed. Here is how it's done. Then you drop the headrests, which is basically just on a catch. Pull up sharply on this little catch here. Down go the beds, and down goes the occupant. Now for a vehicle that's 4.892 metres long, you're probably wondering, where's all the storage? But with the travel seats pushed furthest forward, there's actually quite a lot of space behind them. As you can see here, whether it's on the floor for long bulky items, or using this shelf that forms one part of the bed. There's also some storage here behind these timbered doors, some shelves in this unit, and next to it more of a wardrobe style configuration. This test van also has another cool feature, a pair of camping chairs in this zip pocket in the tailgate. As tested, this four berth California Ocean will cost you just over £54,700. As we've seen, it's positively stuffed to the gunnels with kit, from that amazing electric roof down to the Lieflats clever seating. Very good touches indeed. 
The payload is just over 400 kilograms, so whatever your leisure activity of choice, whether it's canoeing, cycling or surfboarding, this vehicle should be able to cope with those demands. Now some would say that with all this added bling and a price tag to match, that the California is far removed from the vehicles of old, but looking at it another way, isn't that just why we love it? Hello and welcome to my workshop. I'm Dave Newell and today I'm going to be talking about solar panels. Solar can save you money if you would otherwise be using hookup or a generator to provide you power. They cost a few hundred pounds now to buy the kit, but once you've got it installed, there is no further cost to it. And if you're not having to run a generator or use a main site with hookup, you can be saving money in that respect. You can buy a solar panel kit and install it yourself, or you can have it installed professionally by most workshops around the country will do that. It's a relatively straightforward job. Most of the work is involved in hiding the wire and keeping it tidy inside. If you're doing it yourself, a typical kit will consist of the solar panel, a pair of mounting feet. They come in various shapes and sizes. These are perfect for this type of panel and size. Waterproof cable entry box. This is where the cables will come through and enter through the roof of the vehicle and then go down to the regulator. And a pair of cables. These need to be ultraviolet proof cable protection. So the, the sheathing on the cable won't degrade in sunlight. Ordinary cables will degrade over a matter of time and break down. Basically, the solar panel is what's called a photovoltaic array. Fancy name. It turns sunlight into electricity. A typical panel as used in a motorhome will produce anywhere between 17 and 22 volts direct from sunlight. That's obviously too high to feed straight to your battery. 22 volts into a 12 volt battery will soon wreck it. So we use a regulator. Two different types of regulators, PWM, pulse width mode, and MPPT, maximum power point tracking. PWM simply switches on and off very rapidly to regulate the voltage. MPPT is a bit more complicated. It does it electronically and regulates the voltage and current by that means. The beauty is the MPPT can give a claimed 30% more energy from the same size solar panel to charge your batteries with. The PWMs are obviously cheaper. MPPTs are dearer but you do get more for your money. If you've got a continental vehicle, typically German built, they will almost certainly have Shout Electrics. Um, Shout produce their own regulator. This is their MPPT unit. This will plug directly into their distribution unit, the, the Electroblock, and distribute the charge between the engine and leisure batteries accordingly. So in summary, do you need a solar panel? Maybe, maybe not. If you mainly use campsites with hookup, you probably don't need a solar panel at all. If you mainly camp away from hookup, then yes, a solar panel can be a good idea. The size according to your power needs and where you're gonna be camping. If you're going up into Scotland in winter, you're gonna need a bigger panel to make some use of it. If you're gonna spend winter down in Southern Spain, an 80 watt panel will be adequate. Basic regulator slightly more expensive but this will make better use of the panel and if you've got shout electrics i would strongly recommend using their own system i hope you found this useful and i'll see you next time the auto safer stanway is a peugeot boxer based panel van conversion that packs in a huge amount of features to a six meter long body length it has a double bed measuring six feet by two inches an end kitchen and a corner washroom, plus a very sociable lounge. But how does it squeeze it all in? Let's find out. Now this lounge has been designed to enjoy fantastic views from the side of the vehicle. And as you can see with the side door fully retracted, there is absolutely nothing between you and the great outdoors. 
Now the back behind me has been built up with a particular interest on this seat support. Something echoed in the back of the driver's seat which has also been built up to support somebody sitting in the 90 degree position facing each other here, the more conventional way of using a dinette. Now this lounge also doubles as the master bedroom and the whole process of transformation is fairly straightforward. Once you've done it a couple of times, it'll become second nature. First of all, you drop the table, extend the supports for the bed, move the cushions around, add in the filler cushions that are stored in the cupboard at the side of the vehicle, take this seat back off where I'm sitting now, that goes in the middle, and once you've smoothed it all out, you have a double bed that measures six foot by two inches and is very comfortable indeed. Next to the wardrobe, you'll find the corner kitchen, which is very ergonomic. Everything is close at hand and Auto Sleepers has done a good job of specking it up. There are three gas rings, combination oven and grill, dual fuel fridge with separate freezer compartment, a microwave oven, sink, and racking for crockery under the worktop, which also houses a coffee machine. The washroom is small but well equipped. You have a separate vanity unit and shower attachment, a swivel loo, two mirrors, and a small cupboard. There's even an extractor fan. Okay, it might not have the most real estate in the world, but if you're wondering where to get dressed, then it's quite a simple solution. You just pull back this cupboard door, open the wardrobe door to meet in the middle, and hey presto, you have a self-contained dressing area. The Peugeot Boxer has a 2.2 litre engine, and Auto Sleepers has up-spec'd it, so it has 150 bhp power output. Some other great things in the cab include steering wheel mounted controls of the DAB stereo, which has connectivity for mobile devices through Bluetooth and USB. Cruise control, colour reversing camera, air ride suspension and a wind-up canopy awning are all added extras from the premium pack, which is £2,500. The Auto Sleeper Stanway will cost you £49,200 on the road and it has a very respectable 562 kilogram payload. So that's plenty for the touring couple. Bear in mind that with four belted travel seats, you can take guests during the day, even if you can't sleep them at night. But that's no impediment, really. Plenty of people do that. You also get the benefit of the side opening door and the lounge configuration, so you have an unobstructed view to the great outdoors. And what's not to like about that? At just under six meters, you get an end kitchen, a corner washroom, and a super comfortable double bed. Some would say you have to break it up and make it up a couple of times a day, but that's no great problem. It wouldn't be a deal breaker for me as it's well engineered and all the extra cushions have dedicated storage. Sadly, that's all we've got time for on this week's show. We'll be back soon with some more motorhome and campsite reviews, plus some friendly expert technical advice from Diamond Dave. In the meantime, you can keep in touch with us via Facebook, Twitter or practicalmotorhome.com. Until next time then, tour safe and take care. Truma, makers of the combi heater and iNet system, are proud to sponsor Practical Motorhome TV.